Hey, Spider Wayne here, and today's video review and giveaway is being brought to you by Rove. Two to give away, one to review. Let's get into this right now. Okay, so the short end is I absolutely love this camera from Rove. It's a 4K camera, has a lot of features like a wide dynamic range, Wi-Fi connection, so you can connect your cell phone to it, and monitor it, and control it, and change settings, and all that good stuff. Has a lot more features, and uh, all you have to do is stick it to your windshield, plug one end of the cable into it, Plug the other end of the power cable into your cigarette charger. Turn your car on. And go. Almost forgot my camera. Has a camera of a 2160p at 24 frames per second. Built-in Wi-Fi, built-in GPS, G-Sensor, 150 degree view angle. Loop cycle recording, uh, let's see, parking mode, emergency lock button, motion detection, time lapse video, and can support up to 128 gigabyte SD card. Not too shabby. So I've already taken everything out. You got the camera, you got your cigarette lighter uh, charger, you got two USB cords, you got a short one, you got a long one, you've got uh, these cable connects for the windshield and a little pry deal here to get up under the, um, the headliner of your car if you want to tuck the cables away and hide them instead of sticking them to your windshield. You have the traditional suction cup mount to the windshield and you have this other one that's more of a kind of a permanent in place mount in case you want to just place it somewhere and leave it there. The suction cup you can kind of move it around. The camera itself you have a TV output let's see if I can show you okay you got a TV output an SD car slot a power button a menu button an up button emergency lock button down button and an OK confirm button and underneath you have your serial number and let's see here so yeah HD out and USB so to connect this both of these connect the same way you take this part right here and you just slide it into the top, stick it on there, and then you can turn the camera. I'll show you over here. You can turn the camera like so, and uh, I like that. It's, uh, it doesn't like click into places. It's, it's real smooth. You can stop it anywhere you like, so that's a plus. Okay, so out of the box, you'll get these three cards that come with your dash cam. One is a thank you card, one is a quick start guide, and the other is a user manual. So let's start here with the thank you card. The thank you card has information in case you're unhappy, have any problems. They'll uh, give you an email address right here that you can send to to t contact them. They also have a phone number here for you to reach them. Uh, a lot of places lack that, so I think that's really good that they've included it. And if you're happy, then they're hoping that you'll go to this URL here, and uh, which is on Amazon, and leave a nice review. The next one is sort of like a um, kind of like a one, like a fold-out map, the Quick Start Guide, which has information uh, quickly. It tells you about out-of-the-box instructions. It has everything about the buttons on it and it goes over the SD card. So this will get you up and running very quickly. And last is the user manual. For those of you that really like to dig in deep, there's a lot of good information, a lot of detailed stuff here. Uh, I went over a lot of this in my review, but uh, like here they go over motion detection and this randomly picks up mouse here. There's um, photo settings so there's some more detailed information I think it goes over things like exposure and all that kind of good stuff troubleshooting in case you have any issues and um, oh it also goes over the one year limited warranty so okay so a lot of good information right here 
right out of the box, everything that you need to get up and running. Rove gives you everything. So I'm really happy with this company. Whoa, two cars almost collided. That one guy needs to slow down up there. Sure am glad I got my trusty 4K dash cam from Rove. <laughs> okay, so here's some sample footage and audio taken directly from the camera, from the dash cam. And uh, sorry about the haze. There's been a lot of fires going on around here. So I think through the magic of editing, I will switch to some previously taken footage on a clear day right now. Up ahead here I'm going to do some freeze framing so that you can see how clear the video is if you stop and take a look. So you can see the signs and the uh, car. They just look really really clear. I'm going to do a few more here. One more. Okay, so then after this, I'm going to hit the road, but I think I'll show you what the uh, Rove software looks like that you can use to take a look at your video on your computer. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do is go over to the Rove website and download either the player for the PC or Mac. Okay, once you have the car DV player installed, all you have to do is open one of your video files from your dash cam and you'll see on the right side, you'll see Google Maps and on the left your video that has all the information like the date, speed, and all that good stuff. In the lower right hand corner, again, you, you get the miles per hour there or um, the direction that you're driving. So a lot of good information here if you should ever need it. Okay, so right here, I almost forgot to include some nighttime driving. And uh, I wanted to show the difference between wide dynamic range turned on and off. Uh, WDR may be a new thing, I'm not sure. It might have come in with the new firmware that I just recently installed. Uh, so check the site for it if you don't have it on your camera and download the firmware and it should be there. You can see on the right where WDR is turned on. The video is a lot brighter. Sometimes that helps with seeing things. I personally like the left side better. It looks a little more natural. However, up ahead here I'm going to freeze frame it. Uh, I'll be freeze framing both sides. Right now I only have the right side frozen so the left can catch up. And right over here you can see how much brighter it is on the right side. You can see everything a little better on top there than on the left. And this is just some extra footage. I thought it looked really good. I stopped off at a convenience store and I had wide, wide dynamic range turned on. And I thought this looked pretty good. Okay, now I'm going to do a quick overview on the menu in the uh, dash cam. Uh, some of the things I'll go over in a little more detail and some things I won't. Go ahead and turn it on by pushing the button on the side. I don't have an SD card in there so it's going to tell me that I don't have one and then it will go away. Really quick, this is the menu button, the up button, the emergency lock button, the down button, and the confirm button. Okay, to get into the menu you're going to click the, the menu button on the left side here. And the first thing up is resolution. I have mine set to 1920 by 1080p, uh, 60 frames per second. But if you go all the way up, you got 2880 by 2160p, 24 frames per second. And that's your 4K right there. And that looks really good, nice and crisp. I actually have been using both. But um, for now, I'm going to go back down to 1920 by 1080p, uh, 60 frames per second. But it goes all the way down to your 720p settings 
which is right here 1280 by 720p at 30 frames per second. But like I said, I'm not going to use that one. I'm going to go back here. I'm going to click the OK button. And now I'm going to scroll down to loop recording. What this is, is um, it will record until your, your SD card is full. I'm using a 128 gigabyte SD card. And uh, I have it recording in five minute increments. So what that does is it will continually record five minute increments until the card is full. Then it'll go back to the first five minute increment and it will delete that one and overwrite it with a new one. And that way it just keeps looping and looping and looping. And with 128 gigs of space, I think I'm getting, well, I don't know, but I'm getting days of uh, video before it starts to do that. So let's get out of here. I'm going to scroll down to WDR. That is for um, wide dynamic range. Pro probably would be better to use in the evening, although you can leave it on all the time. And what happens is uh, it makes things a little bit uh, brighter, I think. Uh, it gives everything a little bit more color and handles like brake lights from other cars a little better. So sometimes if it's not on, you can get a glare and not see their license plate. But with it on, I think it kind of clears that up a little bit. So I may leave that on. I like it either way. It looks good either way with it on or off. This is your exposure settings. You can brighten or darken the camera. If you think it's too bright, turn it down. If it's too uh, dark, turn it up. I leave mine at zero. For time-lapse recording, if I get around to it, I'm going to post a video. I'm going to give it a try. I haven't tried it yet, but uh, I'll see how that goes. If it looks good, I will be posting it here. Uh, motion, well, let's take a look at the setting real quick. Four image a second, two images a second, one image a second. Uh, there's more settings down there. Uh, I will probably leave mine set to when I decide to try it. I'll probably go, I like two to four images a second, so... We'll, we'll check that out later. Motion detection, I wouldn't advise using this unless you have your dash cam wired directly to the car for constant power, otherwise you're going to kill the battery and the dash cam, which isn't very long. Um, I, I've had several dash cams and the batteries never last too long. So directly connecting it to your car, which there are kits that will enable you to do that, would be good if you want to use motion detection. So if something walks in front of your car, runs in front of your car while you're parked and away from your car, it'll turn on and start to record. So parking mode's kind of the same thing. I think that's like if uh, somebody hits your car while you're away to get a jolt. If it does, it'll record and lock that file and keep it for you, let you know. And if you have the voice on, which is called beep, if you have that on, when you come back to the car, it'll tell you that your car was hit while you were away. Record audio. Self-explanatory, I have mine turned on. Stamp, uh, that's the, the time and date stamp. That's just what shows up in the video at the bottom of the screen. You can turn that off or on. Same thing with the speed, GPS. Now G-Sensor, while you're driving, if something hits you or you hit a, a pothole really hard, it's going to, depending on the level that you set, it's gonna take that file and lock it so that it can't be erased or overwritten. Um, I leave mine at a 5, but you may change that if you find that it's locking too many files. If it's not locking any, then you want to turn it up. So turn it down if it's, if it's locking too many for no reason. And uh, you know, it could save you if you get hit and uh, you don't want that file to be overwritten. So that's the G-Sensor speed unit. There you go. Live speed. 
on or off. So same thing, it'll show you your speed when you're driving around. And that one, if uh, the wallpaper is turned on, which I have it turned on, it'll show you your, your speed that you're driving at the time. And um, it's, sometimes it's actually easier to look at that than it is to look at your dashboard. So, okay, to get out of the menu, you tap on this and to get into the second part of the menu, you click the menu button again, but you click it a second time. Now you're on the second part of the menu. If you go down, you can turn your Wi-Fi on. With Wi-Fi, that's pretty cool because then you can connect your phone to your dash cam and you can review files and things like that. You can do that on the camera too, but it's, sometimes it's nicer to do that with the Wi-Fi on your cell phone. Date and time. Self-explanatory, you just set that, put your time zone, time zone setting in, and you can say auto power off um, immediately or after three minutes, five minutes, ten minutes, and so on. LCD on and off setting, same thing while you're driving. You could have it stay on for a while and then turn off, and if you do, then that wallpaper comes on, or screensaver is what it's really called. So I have mine turned on. All right, so we're on the freeway. I'm showing you the screensaver that this camera has. The upper left-hand corner, the red dot blinking, is showing that it is the dash cam is recording video right now. Uh, at the speed limit is showing 67 miles per hour, saying that we're going southeast, and it's showing the current time. So if you can put the car in cru uh, um, um, cruise control, we could try matching this up. So it's showing me 69, 70 miles per hour. What do you got? Same. Okay, we're good. Beep. Now this used to only beep. With the current firmware, it now talks. Another new feature is you got the miles per hour right here on the, on the actual camera itself. And um, I am going to go into the settings and you can hear it talk and if I hold the up button for a couple of seconds it turns motion detect detection on if I hold it again for a few seconds it goes off so as you can see everything that you enable or disable um, the voice will will activate so I just muted the camera uh, the, the microphone in the camera in case, let's say you get a phone call and you don't want that recorded, it it will um, mute. I press the button again real quick and the mute's back off and it's recording audio again. So yeah, pretty neat features for this, this dash cam. Everything you, that you'd want is built in. I believe if you're away from your car and you do have um, that sensor turned on so that when you if your car gets hit while you're away and you come back it'll tell you that your car has been hit and to check for that locked file so that's kind of neat if you have your car wired directly and you have that turned on pick your language you got a tv mode we're in tsc here in the u.s oops let me go back in i hit the wrong button then you can input your license plate, frequency, if it's flickering a lot, you can switch between 50 and 60 hertz. This is uh, your GPS info, which a lot of information, I don't know what you need this for, but I guess somebody has a need for it or it wouldn't be in here. Storage space, this tells you how much space you got in your SD card. You can format your SD card, reset everything to default, and check your firmware version. I suggest that if you get this camera that you download the current firmware. Uh, Rove has been putting out firmwares pretty regularly, so that's a good thing. They're always updating, making it better, so uh, check for the firmware. So now I'm gonna go over some of the uh, Wi-Fi stuff. Be right back. Okay, I'm gonna go back into the camera again and go into the Wi-Fi mode. So once it comes on, if your card is in, you have to press the OK Confirm button once to stop it from recording. Then hold the Emergency Lock button down for a little bit and Wi-Fi 
turns on. Now on your cell phone, I'm using an iPhone 10. Pick uh, the Rove connection. Make sure you already have the Rove app installed on your phone. Okay, once you have it, you can get out of that and go to your Rove app. And it should connect just fine. There it is. I'm going to go horizontal with this. And I'm going to go from video. I'm going to pick camera just to show you how things change. I'm going to go to folders. And now that I'm in here, I can review some of the footage that I've taken. So let's see. Let's go with uh, something maybe kind of early. Let's go with this one. Here's some footage I took a few days ago. Just driving around through a parking lot. So it's kind of neat. You can monitor, you can view things through your, your phone if you're connected to the app and your camera is on Wi-Fi mode. So basically you get the idea there. I'm going to go back. Uh, there's settings here that you can go to. And... Um, Here's all the same things you can change if you don't want to go into the app to do it. So pretty neat. You have a lot of access here with the phone app. Mm -hmm.